So I'd like to talk to you about uh, vein occlusions. There are two types of vein occlusions, branch vein occlusions and central retinal vein occlusions. In this video, I'll just talk to you about central retinal vein occlusions. If you have the other one, there's a separate video for that. So risk factors for central retinal vein occlusion include things that cause atherosclerosis. So these are high blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking, diabetes, maybe obstructive sleep apnea may be in that pathway as well. And what happens is that the artery and the vein lie in a common tube, a common passage. They're right next to each other. Now the artery wall gets thicker and bigger and harder when you have um, uh, atherosclerosis and that is damage to the, the artery wall from smoking or blood pressure or cholesterol. And that wall gets harder and bigger and bigger and the little vein that's sitting next to it, um, which is in the common tube, ends up being squashed. And it gets squashed so much that the vein obstructs uh, and the blood stops going through it. And then, you know, that is basically how you get a central retinal vein occlusion. There is one more risk factor for it, and that is glaucoma. And uh, so if, um, if w where the vein passes is passes through the optic nerve, and the optic nerve can be damaged in uh, glaucoma, uh, and it can mean that the, op the, the vein can easily tilt, um, and uh, when it tilts, um, the, um, uh, the, the vein can easily uh, obstruct. Uh, and once again, that can block off um, the central renal vein. So the practical part is that blood can still get into the eye through the artery. So it comes from the heart into the, through the arterial system and into the eye. But because it, it, the blood is drained out of the eye through the veins, and because the veins are blocked, the blood can't get out of the eye. That blockage can be a partial blockage or a complete blockage. If it's a partial blockage, the, the flow of blood is still going, but it's only working at half speed uh, or you know, at a reduced efficiency. But there can be a complete blockage uh, and that becomes difficult because uh, it's like any pipe system and if the outflow is, is, um, uh, is completely obstructed, then the inflow through the arteries will also be obstructed. And then your eye just really doesn't get enough oxygen um, and, um, and uh, other nutrients uh, and your blood and your, um, your vision will deteriorate because of this lack of, uh, of oxygen and nutri nutrients. The other, um, it's very hard to unblock the arteries um, and so we can't unfortunately do that. So if you come in with a complete uh, arterial uh, venous blockage, so complete retinal vein occlusion, the prognosis is not always that good. Um, but luckily this is relatively uncommon. What is far more common is a partial blockage. And in that situation, what will happen is that the blood gets into the eye, all right, through the arteries, but it doesn't leave very well um, because the vein is partially blocked. And that excess fluid escapes all through uh, the retina and through the eye. And it builds up as this collections of fluid, which we call uh, macular edema. Uh, and edema just means water, so it's water, and it's water in the macular part. The macular part is the part of the eye that you use for central vision. So it floods, it gets filled up with water, and so your eye doesn't see very well. And we do have really effective treatments for that. Now that treatment uh, is injection treatment. And we give an injection in the eye, which, we're gonna, which we address in a separate video the advantages and disadvantages of, of injections. Um, but that fluid then will seal, that uh, injection will seal up uh, the leaking blood vessels um, and uh, the, the, the blood uh, and the water all then stays within the blood vessels and doesn't leak out through the retina. Um, and the retina then goes back to a normal shape uh, and, um, and that waterlogged effect disappears and your vision often improves quite dramatically. So, um, if you have been diagnosed with a vein occlusion, um, uh, the, um, you, you will often have been started on um, uh, injection treatment to get rid of the fluid, and um, we will encourage you to optimize your blood pressure and cholesterol and smoking and diabetes and these things uh, to try and minimize any risk that you could have this same condition in the other eye. 
Um, if your blood supply into the eye is really, really compromised, like a complete blockage that I talked about, in these situations, we will need to laser um, the areas of the eye which aren't getting adequate blood supply. This is fairly rare, but we would do it on a, you know, there's always one patient through the practice that's requiring this laser. Um, but um, uh, pleasingly, the majority of people don't need that laser treatment. We also want to continue to optimize your glaucoma management if you have this condition. And lastly, um, we, one of the questions is, uh, should you go on a blood thinner? Um, would a blood thinner mean that the blood will pass through the partial blockage more easily and prevent it turning into a full blockage? And the answer to that sort of counterintuitively and surprisingly is no. Um, they found that um, people uh, get more bleeding and more leakage uh, in the back of the eye if, um, if you do put people on blood thinners. Uh, and so the aim is we don't take people off the blood thinners. If you're already on one, we leave you on it. Certainly, especially if you've got some heart condition or some other thing where you need your blood thinner, stay on it. Um, but we don't actively put people on blood thinners if you're not on one already. As well as that, we get people just to, um, if you have recently had a vein occlusion, we, we don't particularly always adjust your um, blood pressure or other uh, cardiovascular um, parameters uh, immediately because if the, if the blood is flowing okay, we, we don't really want to reduce the blood pressure and reduce the potential perfusion uh, in the eye. So keep things stable for a bit. Um, along that path is we try and get people to avoid dehydration um, 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 in the in the time of having a uh, you know after of having a, a vein occlusion, just so the blood flow is maintained uh, in a regular and optimized uh, fashion. Hopefully, you then start on injections. The fluid goes away, your vision picks up, um, and uh, and the outcomes for the vast majority of vein occlusions uh, is very very good. So, you know, 50, 60, 70 percent of people get. Uh, maybe even 80% of people will get really, really good vision um, uh, after having a central retinal vein occlusion. It does require ongoing injections, which is annoying, um, but uh, the visual outcomes are excellent. Um, uh, so look, I know that's a fairly detailed video, but hopefully that uh, gives you some information on um, a central retinal vein occlusion. Thanks.